Hello, how are you doing? And welcome back to the channel. Something a little bit different for you today. I'm going to be talking about whether players should use social media to talk about refereeing decisions or potentially criticise referees. It all comes after the case of Jack Knoll, which has happened in the Gallagher Premiership in the last few days following the most recent round of fixtures. So in the video, I'll kind of explain the whole Knoll incident, talk about the fallout from that, because I think the RFU have opened a can of worms for themselves, but then also get onto the, the more general topic of whether players should be on Twitter, should be on social media and talking about decisions in game as it is really. So a few different elements. Drop a comment down below to let me know what you think. I'd imagine that we'll be roughly on the same page, but it's a bit of a divisive issue. So do drop a comment down below. And also, if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel as well, that's always massively appreciated. But enough of the intro. Let's get into it. OK, so I'll do my best to sum up what happened, essentially, and why Jack Knoll has today, in fact, been fined £10,000 by the RFU, but he won't miss any games for Exeter. And this is all about the match at the weekend, Exeter playing Leicester and Ollie Woodburn receiving his second yellow card and therefore a red card for a tackle, an attempted tackle, which stopped Chris Ashton scoring a try. And it's one of those just bizarre incidents. Carl Dixon, the referee... Technically, and from what the RFU have said in their statements, has made the correct decision. But it highlights the issues of the rules in the game. And Jack Knoll, having tweeted uh, about that incident, has then got himself in trouble. So it was one where Woodburn was covering across. Stuart Hogg had already put in the tackle on Chris Ashton. They were going to ground towards the try line. Woodburn kind of slid onto his knees, fell on top of that uh, on, on top of Ashton to help with the tackle, help with that defensive work and did prevent the try being scored. And in the letter of the laws, he went off his feet. He dived on top of a player that was on the ground. I guess it's kind of killing the ball. It stopped the try being scored. So in the letter of the laws, it's one of those, that, as I say, the RFU are pointing out, well, the correct decision was made. But it, it's just one of those grey areas. And what it essentially says is that there's nothing you can do in that situation to stop a player scoring a try. But then what about an attacking player, maybe a winger who dives into the corner to try and score? Technically, you're not allowed to jump into a tackle either. So therefore, should those incidents be um, highlighted and be officiated differently? So I think it's interesting, um, actually, that the RFU are, are backing Carl Dixon in this. I think it's one of those that they maybe need to look at the laws in a little bit more detail and provide just a bit more nuance around them to be kinder to the players because what's Ollie Woodburn expected to do there? But that's by the by anyway. Jack Knoll then off the back of that tweeted, I'm actually in shock, like shock shocked. What the hell is happening? That's one of the worst decisions I've ever seen and then ever in capital letters. Now, the good thing here, first of all, I'm glad Jack Knoll hasn't copped a ban because that could have resulted in him being banned for his final games at Sandy Park. He's leaving at the end of the year. He's been a loyal servant to that club, having come from Cornwall and then come up through the, the academy system, been part of an incredibly successful era for Exeter Chiefs. So I'm, I'm glad they didn't cop him with a ban. I think that would have been ridiculous. I actually think they've been heavy handed overall here, the RFU. As I'll get on to in a bit... I think for the most part, players should probably refrain from tweeting live in game because I'm not sure too much good comes from it anyway. But I don't think Jack Knoll has said anything particularly wrong there, really. He said it's he's shocked at the decision, which I think a lot of people were because, again, it was such a strange incident. It looked you looked at what Ollie Woodburn did and you thought that's a we see that happen all the time. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. So I think to, the fact to say that he's shocked isn't a major issue. It's probably the fact that he says it's one of the worst decisions I've ever seen. And as the RFU have gone to reiterate, they think that it's the correct decision has been made. But overall, I just don't think he, I don't think he's picked on Carl Dixon personally. And I think it's probably pretty heavy handed. And you've got to remember for rugby players, £10,000, which is going to charity, by the way. And also Noel, I think, has to do some sort of coaching course. Um, but £10,000, even for a guy who's played for England, is, is still a decent chunk of change. I think it's a pretty heavy-handed penalty, really, for Jack Knoll there. And I do think the R of you have, uh, have opened a can of worms. I mean, why has Jack Knoll been singled out when there were other Exeter players who also tweeted about the incident? Does it mean that they're going to have to be consistent to this whenever a player tweets something remotely like that? I just think it's a situation that could have been dealt with a hell of a lot better, really. I think the R of you rather than doing anything publicly, should have maybe just had a word with Jack Knoll, had a word with Exeter, had a word with the RPA actually as well, the Players Union, so that they could speak to all their members as well and say, listen, 
We understand nothing malicious is intended by this, but in the context of the game and looking to um, uphold the values of it, I suppose, or, or try and just, you know, have respect for the referees, if you can refrain from live tweeting during games about decisions, we would appreciate that, really. I think that sort of conversation would have been better to have rather than how they have handled this, because where do they go from here? And as I say, I think it, do highlight, it does highlight a quirk in the law book that they need to close. I mean, it's ridiculous. Like some of that, that's, that grey area of, of that covering tackle and not being able to do what Ollie Woodburn did, I think just doesn't make any sense at all. And as the example I've given already of an attacking player diving into t diving towards the corner is technically jumping into a tackle. A winger's not going to be able to finish in that way now. Yeah, it, it, that needs clearing up. But it gets me on to the second part of this video, which I said was should players be using social media to give their opinions on decisions. And it's such a fine balance. I saw Nick Autorak, former Bath, former Northampton uh, prop, put up like a, a meme, I guess, on, on social media, uh, basically highlighting the, the fact that we want to see more personality amongst rugby players. We want to see their brand and the players being front and centre. But then the moment a player is on Twitter giving their opinion about a game, they get whacked with a £10,000 fine. And this is exactly the sort of incident which results in kind of fairly boring, generic quotes from players and them not opening up to the media. I do understand that point. I think this is slightly different because this is specifically in-game about a decision a referee has made. I accept as well those people who've been pointing out, and there's quite a few of them actually, amongst journalists in particular, this kind of rugby values gets wheeled out or branded around when it suits the, the powers that be. I do get that. I do think for the most part though as well, as I've kind of hinted out already in the video, I think Players generally probably shouldn't be live tweeting about decisions during game. I don't necessarily mind them tweeting during game. In fact, I don't mind them tweeting during game at all if there's been an incredible amount of play. But I think it probably does just require a bit of level-headedness on, on behalf of the players about what they comment on during the game. Because otherwise they're going, they might be whacked with this sort of fine, even though I think the fine is very, very heavy-handed. I think there's probably a bit of common sense from the players as well of just what is and what isn't appropriate for them to be able to to talk about and to speak on. Rob Baxter has said he's going to be speaking to the players about it. I would imagine every director of rugby, every uh, sort of communications manager at the clubs will be speaking to the players about what they put on social media and not. So I think there has to be a balance here. As always, it's about nuance. I think players should probably refrain from criticising decisions on social media during the game. But in terms of tweeting about the game, in terms of showing their personality and their views on the game outside of that, go for it. I think it's a great thing. Hopefully that makes sense. As I said at the start of the video, let me know what you think down below. I do think the RFU, as they often do, have made a bit of a pig's ear of this. I feel for Jack Knoll because he's been made a bit of a scapegoat. And as I say, I think £10,000 is... Is harsh, really, for what he did. I don't think he did anything too but too wrong here, but I guess it's a learning curve. So drop a comment down below, like the video, and subscribe to the channel as well. And as always, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Next one.